In Key West, there are several tour companies that'll charge you upwards of $35 a person for a guided bus tour around the island. If you've never been there, it's not a bad idea. Plus, don't forget it's a tropical island and it rains a lot. If it's raining, always take the bus tour. But to be honest, most of what you'll see is in a completely walkable two-mile rectangle between two of the main streets in Key West. Of course, you can venture out of the rectangle to see some other stuff, but the headliners are all in this easy two-mile loop. And the streets are parallel and only one block apart, so it's easy even if you're tipsy. Starting at Sloppy Joe's Bar at the corner of Duval and Green Streets, only because it's very easy to find. Have a drink and, of course, a world-famous Sloppy Joe sandwich and a beer at as early as 10 a.m., just because you can. Duval Street is the main strip where everything happens in Key West, so you'll be right in the heart of everything. Proceed south on Duval and you'll pass a ton of kitschy little stores, restaurants, and bars on both sides of Duval. You'll see a hard rock, Margaritaville, a pretty church, an old hotel, and even a Starbucks or two. Not many of the main historical points of interest are on Duval, but you should do the whole strip and experience the fun and vibrant energy. At the end of Duval, you'll see the Key West Butterfly Conservatory. If butterflies don't give you the heebie-jeebies, this is a very cool spot to chill out to some new age music in the indoor cooled greenhouse that's home to about a zillion butterflies, tropical birds, and a couple of horny flamingos that always seem to be yelling at each other. It's honestly one of our favorite places on earth to chill for an hour or so. Throw yourself into reverse and head west on South Street for exactly one block, and you'll see a line of people waiting to take their pictures at the southernmost point marker, which is generally accepted as the most southern place in the continental United States. The actual southernmost point is on a naval base behind it, but the general public isn't allowed in there, and there's no pretty marker for a photo op. People behind you will usually be happy to take your picture using your camera, so pay it forward and do the same for the people in front of you. Time to head north again on Whitehead Street this time, where most of the significant tourist attractions live. First up on your right, you'll see the Hemingway House, where Ernest Hemingway lived from 1931 until his divorce in 1940. The second floor studio in the back is where Hemingway wrote his ode to those unfortunate souls who may have had accidents at the sawmill, a farewell to arms. You can climb the steps and view the studio behind a door. Admission is just under $20 per person where you can see descendants of his six-toed cats and learn a little about Hemingway's life. Private evening tours will allow people inside the studio to hang out and actually write for the mere fee of $1,500 a person. Across the street, you'll see the world-famous Key West Lighthouse. This is not the original lighthouse. The original one was swept away in a hurricane. You can climb 80-some narrow-ass metal steps and get a sweeping view of the island. It's not really high enough to see the ocean on either side, but it's a good workout nonetheless. The funnest fact is people in that lighthouse were able to see directly into Ernest Hemingway's bathroom window. Debit about 17 bucks a person for that experience. They now take credit cards. There is a whole bunch of nothing for a few blocks until you get to the corner of Whitehead and Fleming Streets, the official beginning or ending of US Route 1, which runs from this spot all the way up the East Coast to somewhere in Maine. Take the obligatory photos of the mile marker zero on both corners of the street. Continuing north to Green Street, you'll run into a few more points of interest. The Mel Fisher Maritime Museum has shipwreck artifacts and other ship. Across the street, you'll find the Audubon House and Tropical Gardens, which ironically was never lived in by an Audubon. This place is supposedly haunted, like everything else in Key West. Both places are available for tours. Whitehead Street kind of dead ends into Front Street, but continues straightish just past there, it'll wind to the right onto Wall Street. Here, along the waterfront, you'll find Mallory Square, where the sunset festivities begin just before the sun plops into the ocean, which in itself is a fabulous photo opportunity. You'll witness exciting exotic shows like a tightrope walking dog, knife jugglers, and all kinds of other silly human tricks. The shows are free and just kind of appear spontaneously. Head south again and you'll end up on Front Street, 
which crosses Duval, and you'll pretty much be a block north from where you started at Sloppy Joe's. Easy peasy, right? Most of the haunted B&Bs are just on the outskirts of the rectangle, as are the Hog's Breath Saloon and Captain Tony's Bar. The beaches and forts are a little further out, but walkable or bikeable. There are also buses and shuttles available, and bicycle, scooter, or golf cart rentals available all over the island. The best way to enjoy Key West is to embrace the chill, easygoing vibe. If you're into the paranormal, make sure you check out our videos talking about ghosts, spirits, and that creepy doll that inspired Chucky. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. Now get out there and take the free walking tour, and make sure your step counters are working.